soul, worship His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, worship your holy name. Sing like never, sing like never before, O oh my soul, worship your holy name. Sing like never, sing like never before, O oh my soul, worship your holy name. Sing like never before, sing like never before, O oh my soul, worship your holy name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Are you happy to be here this morning? Yes. Or for those who have joined us online, are you happy to be a part of this morning's service? Really, always good to join with God's people to worship and praise the name of the Lord. And so I hope today that, you know, we'll really enjoy the worship and that you'll come to give a lot. Forget about the things of the past week. There are a lot. And let us focus this moment on just worshiping and giving the Lord what he truly deserves. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And why do we do that? Because he has done great things. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. We we'll big up the name of Christ this morning as we come to worship and honor his holy name. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, God, for this one more morning, one more day. Lord, we're not thinking about tomorrow, we're just thinking about today. And we pray that, God, today will be a great and awesome day. As we join together, Lord, to worship you, we pray that God will put our voices together, our hearts and our spirits will become like one as we lift up and honor your holy name. That everybody that are tuning this morning, will truly feel the presence of yours, God. That Jesus, whatever the challenges that we have at the forefront of our minds at this time, Lord, let them be gone in the name of Christ. And let faith return to your people, the people of God. Lord, I pray for the praise and worship team. Lord, who will come this morning with songs of praise to lead us into the temple, into the holy of holiest, O oh Father. We pray for the man of God who shall bring the word of God. That you have already laid a special word on his heart. That he shall bring to us this morning. A word that will prick the heart of all of us that listen or watch. And that God, the toughest heart that listen this morning, shall be able to crumble under this word. Give us something special, we pray. Take charge of our gathering. Let it not be man. But let it be God. For all of those who pray with us this morning, thank you for them who are here. And Lord, for those who have joined online, Lord, I pray that they all will have a wonderful time. In your name we pray. 
Amen. Amen. Are you ready to praise him? Yeah. Say yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. So I'm going to turn over now to the praise and worship team. Welcome back. Welcome back the praise and worship team. They have been away for a while. That's our local team. And we're looking forward to hear great things from them this morning. I now hand over to them. Hallelujah. I am Camille. This is Scott to my right. Yearly for those who are watching online. And Tiana and Gian. Now, I'm excited to be with them because they are the young people. And I think if I hang around them, then I'll stay young as well. I wonder if that's why I chose teaching. Anyway, I'm on leave. But leave just means I'm not at work. You know, the work of the Lord continues. Worship continues. Based on how the, a brother prayed this morning, I'm, I'm constrained to share a brief testimony. My testimony would take a lifetime, but I'll share a brief part of it. And I guess it, it's more of a confession. When we just went online, when COVID hit and we just went online, it took me a, a while to, to tune in, to actually get into the worship. I, I was caught up with not hearing you know, not hearing the music. I love, I love music. I wanted to be a DJ when I was younger. Still love music. It's a struggle. You know, I, I couldn't hear the sound. I, I would complain about, you know, not hearing the drums. I'm not hearing the keyboard. I'm not hearing the progression. And then, then the, something chips out and I'm saying I'm not hearing. And before you know it, I realized that the whole service passed, you know, and I didn't really get a chance to make a connection. So, and, and I, I realized that, you know, if I'm not careful, you know, this will happen and the enemy will steal your joy or will prevent you from getting to make a connection. You know, I was so excited the first time I returned, you know, after having been on break because I felt like the fire was shut up in my boat. I felt like I was going to explode. But guess what? We have DRM and we have to stay in. And you realize that as much as we want to come to the place of worship, as David said. My heart, you know, thirsts for you as the deer pants for the water. When can I see? When can I hear? When can I go into your presence? You realize that God is a spirit. And they worship him, must worship in him, in spirit and in truth. So it might be just audio that you get. And the audio might be less than perfect. But it's up to us to make a connection because God is a spirit. And the spirit of God transcends the electromagnetic spectrum. It, it transcends airwaves. Hallelujah. And where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. So I don't know where you are today. It could be your bedroom, your living room. At church, they say six feet apart. But whoa, they give you six feet so you can dance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another thing I've realized, I was thinking about, hey, how am I going to start? I need an icebreaker. I need a joke because I have to be me. But we don't need an icebreaker. We just need the anointing because it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said I want to leave. I've been searching for, you know, new purpose, new wine. I'm entering this new phase of life. Lord, what will I do after eight months? But you know, the response is the same. My purpose is my purpose. I must worship God a set way. There's a set way that I have to be. You know, and it all comes down to this. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me. <laughs> hey, to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. I feel like preaching this morning. To proclaim the good news of the Lord to the poor to restore sight to the blind and to set free those who are captive if you have a praise this morning let's give God a praise free up yourself you can't sit down and worship God at home get up from where you are type in the chat and don't worry about hey they want likes we don't want likes but when you type when you put the clap hands when you put the fire you're increasing the likelihood of the word of God going out because you're breaking the YouTube algorithm. So if you believe that we serve a wonderful God, a great God, then type in the chat. Not for the likes, because God is great. Hallelujah. 
It's the anointing of God that breaks the yoke. And we're here to give him worship. The worship that we're here to give him this morning has been preordained. We have to give him. We're not going back home with it. So on the loud sounding symbol, on the high sounding symbol, praise God. Hallelujah. Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey. Oh. Glory. Oh. Jesus. I command my spirit right now to praise God. I command my body right now to praise God. Hey. Hey. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God in this place. Lord, we ask that you take over, that you take full control. We surrender everything to you. We ask that we, you'll accept this worship. That you will free your people to worship you in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Take us beyond the veil. Hallelujah. Open the door as I open the door to the tabernacle. To the tabernacle. Lead me beyond. Lead me beyond the bay. And it's there. And it's there I find your presence. And it's there I know.
dwell in you dwell in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty hallelujah my Dear pants for the water, so my soul pants for the living God. Hallelujah. Lord, I thirst for you, and I long to be in your presence. My soul will wait on you. Father, draw me nearer. Draw me nearer to the beauty of your of your In the 
Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let's give him the honor. Let's give him the praise. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. You know, I reflect on a time when I was in a particular relationship. Deep down, or I should say, I didn't know if God sanctioned it, but I know that I wanted it to work. And so when I would pray, I would pray for everybody, my family members, everything. And then it was time for the relationship part. I would just go around it and leave it. You know, I said I was giving God everything, but I didn't want him to touch that. I, I don't know. Maybe I know it wasn't going to work or he, he didn't give, give the go ahead, but I, I didn't give it all to him. Sometimes when you're offering yourself as a sacrifice, if you're not careful, you'll walk off the altar sometimes. So we have to forget our will. That's a part of worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Forgetting about ourselves, what we need, but wanting him to take our will and conforming it to his so this morning we just want to do this one. We just want to ask the Lord to take over all the situations that are on our minds. Fear about vaccine, wrong information, Corona, Delta variant, Mu variant, Theta variant. We need not worry about all those variants because we know we have the Alpha and the Omega. So we're just giving everything to him this morning. We're just asking him to take over, take full control of everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All we want is you. Take over. Take over. Till we are consumed. By nothing, nothing else but you. All we want is you. Take over, take over. Till we are consumed by nothing. This morning, take over, take our plans, take over, take our financial situations till we are consumed by nothing but Jesus. By nothing, nothing else but you.
the blessings come down. The Lord inhabits our praise. Hallelujah. Our God is great. Our God is greater than any other, anything. Hallelujah. One artist said, Jesus bigger than what people say. Jesus bigger than Montego Bay. Right. <laughs> I hear them laughing, calling, running up their mouth. But Jesus bigger than what people say. And it goes without saying that Jesus is bigger than coronavirus. I mean, you can't even see it with your naked eyes. But you know what they do? When they go in the cells, they replicate. They tell the cell to make more virus. And then it's like they take over the cell. You know, kind of sound like something we know about. Rest not against flesh and blood. Demons come in and take over. But you know, we're asking the Spirit of the Lord to just fill this place this morning. And we want to be influenced by the, the Spirit of God. We want to be drunk by the Spirit of God this morning. We're just going to command ourselves to, our spirit, our bodies, our minds to worship God. Hallelujah. Our God is great. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to, we're going to dance this morning. Yeah, man. We're going to dance just like the children of Israel around the walls of Jericho. Yeah, man, march around. That's when the walls break down. When the people made a shout. Hallelujah. Water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. The darkness into the darkness you shine out of the ashes out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like you our god is greater our god is stronger lord you are higher than any our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is greater, our God is stronger, Lord, you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, and if our God is for 
for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand again? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand again? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand again? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? I feel like doing that part one more time. And if our God is for us, and if our God, you have to set up with attitude. You have more than a big brother. And if our God is with us, then what could stand again? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God, and if our God, then what could stand again? And if our God is for us, then what could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand again? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? Then what can stand again? There's no God like Jehovah. 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 There's no God Lift your praise and sing. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 There's no God like him. There's no God like Jehovah. Nobody like him. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like him. There's no God like Jehovah. No one like him. There's no God like him. There's no one like him. There's no God like Jehovah. No one like him. There's no God like Jehovah. No one like him. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? And all the sea, how great, how great is our God. When you hear that sound, make a shout. Hallelujah. How great is our God. Sing Everybody with me. sing. How great is our God. And oh. all the sea, how great, how great. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing of praise. He's our God. He really is a great God. Hallelujah. One more time. Name above all names. Name above all names, you are worthy of all praise. My heart will sing, my heart will sing of grace. Name above all name, name above all name. He's the name above all names. He is worthy of. Great God. 
great God. He really is a 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 great God. Is he a great God? He really is a great God. 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 Hallelujah. He really is a great God. He really is a great God. Undignified praise. He really is a great God. He really is a great God. Lift your hands and praise him. He really is a great God. He really is a great God. That's who you are. He really is a great God. He really is a great God. That's who you are. He really is a great God. 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 That's who, that's who you are. That's who you are. You're my healer. That's who you are. You're my healer. That's who you are. Strong tower. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. You're my healer. That's who you are. That's who you are. You're my healer. Touch my body. You're my healer. Oh Lord, touch That's somebody's back this morning. That's who you are. 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 Hallelujah. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any Our God. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God. Our God is great. Our God. Our God is great. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher oh. than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God. Our God is greater. Our God. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God. Our God. Our God, relationship, our God, of our belonging to us. <laughs> God, we, we, we empty ourselves to you. We leave it all here, God. If this were a war, we're leaving everything on the battleground, but then again, we don't have to fight for ourselves. Oh, God, we serve a big, great, wonderful God. We give you glory. Oh God. This is how we fight our battles. We, we give him glory and the sovereign Lord takes over. So you know one. Oh, one shall chase a thousand. But two shall put ten thousand to flight. That's exponential increase. That mash up mats. The match not add up. That's how great God is. This is how we fight our battles. <laughs> they say eye for an eye leaves everybody blind. This is how we fight our battles. We give it all to Him. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, You are higher than any. Our God is healer. Our God is healer. We surrender everything to You, Lord. Awesome in power. Our God. Our God. Our God is greater one more time. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher. Lord, you are higher than any. Our God is healer. Jire. Our God is healer. Rafa. Awesome in power. Bana, everything. Can do that one more our time. God. Our God is greater than all our circumstances. Our God is greater. Our God finishes our God something, then He shows us the beginning. Lord, you so are it's done. It's already done. Whatever we are going through, it's our done. Our God so 
the healing is already done. So my knee is healed in the name of Jesus. Our God, our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Stronger, Lord, you are higher than any Our God is Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We bless your name. We worship you, Lord. For you are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Your name is above all names. And so we worship you, Lord. We worship you. My question to us this morning. Are you afraid? Are you living in fear? Just yesterday, I got the news that one of my classmates, schoolmate, was a victim of this dreaded disease, this dreaded virus. And even yesterday, I was on the phone praying with a relative who could hardly breathe because of this coronavirus. And the truth is, we don't know how many more. Thousands have died, and we don't know how much more will pass on because of this virus. But our prayer this morning is that God will draw us closer to him, saturate us, and make us his, and we make his, him ours. So whether we live or we die, we are His. And so our prayer this morning is, draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. One more time. Draw me nearer, nearer, nearer. Blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to Thy precious bleeding side. Hallelujah. Almighty God, we humble ourselves before you because you are the great I am. 
There is none like you, Lord, in all the earth. You are the one who put the billions of stars in place and you know each one by name. Oh God, when I consider the work of your hands, the moon and the stars that you ordain, what is man? Oh God, we tremble at your awesome power. Oh, the hills and the valleys and the mountain and the plains bow down before you this morning because you are God and God alone. And all other gods are just mere idols before you this morning. Oh, you are our rock and our hiding place. You are our shelter in the time of storm. You are the God who parted the Red Sea so your children could pass through. You are the God who opened the eyes of the blind and made the lame to walk. You even raised the dead to life again. There is nothing beyond you. Nothing take you by surprise this morning. And so here we are, Lord, bowing before you, this great God, Giving you worship, not just with our lips, Lord, but with everything that is within us. Oh God, we confess our unworthiness, Lord. I am unworthy to even stand here before you this morning. One writer said, I am a wretched man. Oh, what wretched man. Another one says, I am nothing but a worm. Another writer says, I am like the grass that flourished today and tomorrow no more. But you, O oh God, are from everlasting to everlasting, from generation to generation. You are God. And so we are here this morning only because of your grace. You who became, you who had no sin became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. And we only can boast this morning because of that old rocket cross. Nothing else. Nothing more. And so we ask for your purging this morning, Lord. We ask for your washing this morning. Cleanse us, O oh Lord God, from the inside out. And as we borrow the phrase and the words of this psalmist David. Have mercy upon me, O God. According to thy loving kindness and according to your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions, O God. And my sins, for they are ever before me. Cleanse me. Wash me with this up and I shall be whiter than snow. So forgive us, O oh Lord. Please do not remember the sins of our youth. Cleanse us this morning as we bow before you. God, we thank you for your goodness and your grace. We thank you for the air we breathe. We thank you for the rain and the sunshine. We thank you for this place where we can gather together to come and worship you and to bow down before you. Oh God, we worship you in spirit and in truth this morning. And we bless your holy name. God, we put this church before you even now. We ask that you touch our leaders. We ask that you surround them with your grace and your mercy. We pray for our pastors this morning in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God, we ask that you will continue to fill him up, fill them up with your spirit. We pray for every leader of this church. God, we put our own prep school, put more missionary prep before you even now. And we ask for your protection around our children, our teachers our parents and every worker, every person that put foot on this plot of land, oh God. Build a fence all around them today. We present our children before you. 
as they meet face to face. Oh God, we ask that you will be there in every walks of life. That you will be here guiding and guiding each person. Oh God, we put our country before you. We ask for your wisdom for our leaders. Both prime minister and opposition and every member of parliament. Oh God, we pray for all the frontline workers, our nurses, our doctors, our security force. We put them before you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God, we pray for marriages, broken marriages. We pray for relationships, oh God. We pray for relationships, mother and daughter, son. And, 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 and Father, oh God, have mercy. Have mercy upon us, oh Lord. As we turn to you, we seek your face. Oh God, we remember our brothers and sisters in Haiti. Oh God, we ask that you have mercy upon them. And we ask, oh God, that they will turn those who serve other gods, that they will turn to the true and living God in such a time as this. And God, we ask that we will reach out to those that are in need in some way or another to help them in a, a time such as now. God, we lift you up, we praise you. We bless your name for you are good. Hear our cry, O oh God, and attend to our prayer. We know that your ear is attentive to those who call you, who fear you. And so we ask that you hear our prayer this morning as we bow down to worship you. We pray for the remaining of this service, O oh God, that we will continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray that some souls will be saved today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so we, we continue to wait upon you. We continue to wait upon you because your word declares that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So we wait upon you today, Lord, as we give you thanks. We pray no other name but that precious, precious name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God, we remember those who are, who are not well this morning. Those that are sick. You know each one, Lord. We ask that you touch them from the very crown of their head until the sole of their feet. God, we remember our shut-ins and our elderlies. May you continue to surround them with your grace and your mercy. And we ask that they, you keep their minds and their eyes on you. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. thank um, Deacon for leading us into the intercessor prayer. Our scripture reading for today is taken from the gospel according to St. John, reading from verse, um, well, chapter 12, reading from verse 35 to 50. I want to invite young Spence to come and lead us into the scripture. Then after that, the praise and worship team will return with a special item and then Pastor was been doing a series a few weeks. We'll return this morning to continue. So that you prepare yourself for the word of God. Get your Bible ready, or you know, most persons are just using their phone. Get your phone ready on the um, Bible app so we can follow what is going on. 
So um, Spence will come and bring the word of God to us in, the, in relation as you read the scripture this morning. Morning, church. Morning. The scripture reading is taken from John chapter 12, verses 34 to 50. I mean, thir sorry, 35 to 50. Jesus replied, My light will shine for you just a little longer. Walk in the light while you can, so the darkness will not overtake you. Those who walk in the darkness cannot see where they are going. Put your trust in the light while there is still time. Then you will become children of the light. After saying these things, Jesus went away and was hidden from them. But despite all the miraculous signs Jesus had done, most of the people still did not believe him. This is exactly what Isaiah the prophet had predicted. Lord, who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? But the people could not believe. For as Isaiah also said, the Lord has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts so that they, their eyes cannot see and their hearts cannot understand and they cannot turn to me and have me heal them. Isaiah was referring to Jesus when he said this because he saw the future and spoke of the Messiah's glory. Many people did not believe in him. However, including some of the Jewish leaders, however, including some of the Jewish leaders, but they would not admit it for fear of the Pharisees would expel them from the synagogue, for they loved human praise more than the praise of God. Jesus shouted to the crowds, if you trust me, you are trusting not only me, but the God who sent me. For when you see me, you are seeing the one who sent me. I have come as a light to shine in this dark world, so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. I will not judge those who hear me but don't obey me, for I have come to save the world and not judge it. But all who reject me and my message will be judged on the day of judgment by the truth I have spoken. I don't speak on my own authority. The Father who sent me has commanded me what to say and how to say it. And I know his commandments lead to eternal life. So I say whatever the Father tells me to say. This is the word of the Lord. God is still God. God is still worthy. You know, um, what can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I'd give him a lamb. If I were a wise man, I'd sure do my part. I know what I'll give him, I'll give him my heart. Right, no, we did not rehearse that yesterday, that's not the, that's not the item. But as I, as I sat there and as, you know, the prayer was prayed, I realized how vital it is for the children to meet in the house of God. And that was reflected on Children's Choir. And I don't, well, it's, this is second Sunday. I'm not, I don't remember which Sunday we would normally sing. It's probably second Sunday. But my mind just ran on them, and I just want us to continue to, to trust God and to pray that, you know, this pandemic will come to an end so that the children can come and meet in the house of the Lord. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But we know that this is where, besides home, this is where the bread of life is broken for them in bite-sized pieces. So I just want us to, to pray, to continue to pray so, so they, can, they can be back out, so they can hear the word and they can respond by giving their hearts. Hallelujah. In the meantime, we continue to surrender all to him. Hallelujah.
my life is not the same everything has changed what you've done for me you've set me free my heart is now your home I'll never be alone what you've done for me you've set me free you removed every barrier erased every failure and your mercy shall turns me I surrender all, all to you my own my heart is yours my heart is, is yours is and yours alone I surrender all I'm giving everything all that Oh 
to Jesus, we surrender. I see a new face or two, and when I do, I feel so elated because I belong to so many people close up. I'm just so happy to see the faces this morning. And again, we want to apologize to the public for uh, the fact that we are not connected uh, the way we want to today due to the uh, fact that Digicel has been down uh, for days now, but I learned that the wonderful team we have in the, in the media are recording so that they'll be able to upload. And so when you do get on to Fort Moore Missionary Church, we hope soon, we apologize for this. We know you're faithful in uh, connecting with us from wherever in the world you are. And uh, we appreciate you um, a lot and pray that as we reach to you later, your hearts will be richly blessed. I want to thank God for the excellent team we had in praise and worship for the great reasoning, um, because as they interjected, as they encourage, uh, as we sing, it's just so appropriate. Obviously, Camille and the team been led by the Spirit of the Lord, um, stimulated us, encouraged us in worship, and blessed us in such a wonderful way. We bless the Lord for the team and for the musicians, from all of those who are uh, technical team in the media room and so on. We're happy for you. Thank you. God bless you. I understand Zeus is in the house today. Uh, Zeus has been restored. Can, can, can I see Zeus waving to me from some point? Zeus, uh, yes, he's at the back there. Zeus is at the back there. God bless you. My brother, now, now it's, it's just a, such a difficult time. I've been so stretched. I did not even reach. I just got news from faithful people from time to time as to how Zeus was doing. And uh, I've been able to pray earnestly, Zeus, for you. If there's one thing I did, I did that. And I'm just so happy. A very faithful member, always here. And God has restored him. He's with us today. Put your hands for a praise to the Lord today as we welcome Zeus back church. As I indicated, it's a very difficult time. And um, I'm grateful for the word that the Lord has been placing on my heart for all of us to encourage us. It's a word of counsel and caution and a word to let you know that God has to be praised and worshipped uh, nevertheless. Uh, it's a time when I feel so stressed, not just stressed, but stretched. And um, I'm going to be begging for some understanding. I can't be at all of the points. Um, but Riley, it's so nice to see you. <laughs> so nice to see Riley. It's been a long time, too. Um, and so, you know, funerals... Uh, prayer meetings, prayer cells, and so on. I realize some of the funeral dates are clashing. And um, for example, this Thursday and Friday, we will have back and back funerals here, um, you know, for uh, relatives of members of the church. And you all can come, but there may be a link for you to get on and to, to watch. Um, and uh, while I was preparing and calling out to Elder Bersing to, to help me, help please, 
um, he tells me, yes, he never says no. And um, only last night I got a call. I asked him to help me with one funeral that is for, for the 15th. And uh, little did I know that I had a cousin in the country who, who um, will be put to, uh, away on that very same day. So um, now he's going to have to call for help. Um, I was asking him to help me from here, but he's going to need help from here to help with that because I've been the one um, uh, called on to put this cousin away um, in the country on the 15th. And, um, and I think that's going to be the cousin of, of uh, Patsy Gordon right here. And that urn is going to go to Dovecot. But that service should be here at uh, 10 o'clock on the 15th. And one is going to be here on the 14th. Now, there's also another clash with Sister Elaine um, uh, and Brother Herbert. And Sister Elaine's body is going to be in St. Elizabeth. I've committed to do that, South St. Elizabeth. And... Um, and uh, so, so pastor and the elders are going to have to, we're just going to have to share again. Uh, while I'm putting away Sister Elaine on this side, you'll be putting away Brother Herbert uh, Eben. Uh, those, those are clashes that we have again. Um, families, I hope you'll understand. Um, I'm only one person. and um, it's, it's just a tough time dealing with six deaths in a row, six deaths. Um, and well, I didn't count the one or the ones in the country. Um, there's a wonderful man, by the way, Brother uh, Bearson in Waterford. We probably know him, manages the property. Uh, he was my right hand man, was like security. He was just so good. And I got word he passed from the virus uh, two days ago, three days ago. It's a sad time, it's a sad time, and I want to continue my counsel with you. Um, it's painful when so many people so dear to you, Lisa, so, so good to you, uh, just slip away. And these are people, some of them you're not seen for six months or a year. Why? Because of the social distancing or the... You know, we can't visit the hospitals and the homes like we freely want to. We make connections on phone. It's not the same. And some of these people will never see down this side again. We just have to wait until we get to heaven. We've never seen this. We've never lived like this. But there has to be some adjustments. There has to be some serious praying. And we have to take the risks. And go to the grave sides and you know in the country parts and to these public cemeteries and and um, it's tough going. But they who wait upon the Lord, help me, will renew their strength and will mount up with wings like eagle. Will run and not be weary. Will walk and not faint. And last week's message was about you and I holding on. Why? Because weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Soon it will be morning. And our mourning will be over. For we will walk with God and talk with God. And he will tell us. He never left us anywhere. He's with us always. He took us through the valley of the shadow of death. He took us. He, he will spare some of us and restore our bodies like he did for Zeus. And so many of us who were perhaps down with the virus. Oh, it has made any, many attempts at me. I could feel my systems fighting. And I could feel also the presence of the Lord. Just building up resistance and building up the immune system. Hello. This is a day, we call it a day of mix-up. Mix-up. 
But it's also a day of walking close with God, in close communion with God, a time of prayer. Anybody know what the mix-up mix-up mean? I've never heard of so many things mixed up to drink. To keep our bodies healthy. And I was smiling broadly while I was doing one piece of mix-up myself. And I thought, one day, they wouldn't call this creative mixing up or cooking. You know, they'll say insipid. But you know, the time has come, knowledge has increased, and we all are on the trial to ensure that we battle on, we fight on through life. Joy will come in the morning. Morning will be over when morning comes. Thank God for how he has been with us and for how we can depend on him. And I'd like us today to reflect on those words that Spence read earlier. It's a backdrop as I continue to encourage you, as I connect you with the counsel of God, because those words that Spence read earlier for us are some final words of Jesus, if you understand uh, the history and the chronology of things as Jesus executed ministry here on earth before he left for glory. Those were final words of Jesus. And it's a beautiful drop, drop back, um, you know, uh, uh, a nice little uh, drop back for us. Why? Because we continue to look at how we can keep rejoicing and the smile on our faces when there is death and doom and destruction, when there is devastation. All about us. We want to be able to still praise the Lord and to just let loose, like you would see Gian and and Camille and and the team just just opening us and opening us to praise and giving themselves to praising the Lord, irrespective of what is happening. And and we heard all about that in the Psalm last week, Psalm number thirty. At one point in that Psalm, if you had looked at it carefully, the Psalmist is saying, "My dead." body cannot do it that when i return to the dust i cannot praise but for now life is in my body for now i can breathe uh, praise for now praise can be not just from my lips but from my heart and he's making it clear that i can also come with my substance to the lord because it's not just about lip service as, as it is about offering even my substance to the lord when i work and i can give back to the lord because the greatest gift ever given was the gift the gift that was taught by Jesus when he gave his all for us that's why we give in worship that's why we praise in worship that's why we pray in worship that's why worship is human responding to divine revelation God revealing himself manifesting himself in the flesh and if you don't don't worry heaven won't miss you wood and stone knows how to praise God Understand it clearly, brothers and sisters. It is still a time to connect with God. Praise God. In other words, I'm simply saying it is still a time to hold on. Hold on to God. So I talked about this lovely psalm last week where we saw the psalm bur psalmist burst out in praise. Where we, where we learned that, listen, weeping is, 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 is what? Is my meat for today. Meeting may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And we notice his praise was for deliverance and that his praise was a review of the past experience he has, he has had. And he's saying, I know what it means to walk with God in the good times and in the bad times. But whatever time it is, I'm still going to praise the Lord. 
our preference is always for joy and, and pleasure and day and, and light, not weeping and pain and night and darkness. But then he says, when morning comes, it will only be unmitigated joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. And so I want us to make a connection now and to see what is, is coming from the last words of Jesus somewhat and how they were not just the words of Jesus because long before Jesus came in the flesh, it was Isaiah's uh, proclamation. It was Isaiah's uh, annunciation. And, and, and then from Isaiah, we find that John takes on. So John and Isaiah corresponds, and, and I'm going to show that to us in a little while. And then Jesus and the Apostle Paul corresponding in the same breath. You see, the unity of Scripture. What is before us, folks, is Scripture fulfilled. And what we still have is, is a history being fulfilled before our eyes. But trust me, pandemic and its variants, all of what you're seeing happening in the world is about fulfillment of Scripture. And you would believe everybody would hush and line up themselves and lift up their eyes and their heads because our redemption draw it near. No. Hearts are becoming desperately wicked. People are hungry for, for wealth. And, and people become wretched. And, 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 and trust me, um, hearts of men are getting harder and harder. And I want you to understand that there's going to be the, still the fight for, for power in the, in, the, in the governance of the world. And there's, there's going to be one world leader who wants to, to run the show. And, and many of those who come on the scene in some of these first world countries are going to be revealing the antichrist that is to come. For John says many antichrists will showcase the antichrist. The fight for power is going to be Terrible, and some more diseases will come on the scene. Why? In the name of fighting for prominence and power and leadership, my brothers and sisters. And as they fight and fight and fight for power and prominence, one power most powerful will come on the scene, and every knee is going to have to bow, and every tongue is going to have to confess that Jesus Christ. Christ is Lord, not because we have claimed him Lord, but because God has re already made him Lord. Jesus, the Son of God, is Lord. This is the only mighty God, the only wonderful counselor, the only Prince of Peace. I'm saying it to you today. Scripture is being fulfilled before our very eyes, and we do not know it. My God. Why are we so dumb and so deaf? Why have we become so desperately wicked? Why is it from parliament to poor house, there is just a hunger for what is not going to make any sense and of any lasting significance in the end? So, so, so what's my admonition to the church, to you who are here and the hundreds that will join us later when you click on? What, what's my comfort, my, my word of consolation, my word of comfort comes from Jesus Christ himself. Hold on, my child. Joy will come in the morning don't worry yourself don't fret about the coronavirus at your doorsteps don't even 
Don't even, you know, be troubled because it took your relative. Yeah, it's a dear relative and it might very well come to you. Don't be troubled. This is time when we continue to hold on. I'm going to ask upstairs to just feature that wonderful verse for me in the King James Version. This is now Philippians chapter 2 because this is a little sub that I want to, to come from today as we use this backdrop uh, that, that Spence read to help us to, to take comfort in God's word, to, to relax and to stand still and, and, and to see, have faith and to see the salvation of the Lord. Look at that in the King James Version. Holding forth the word of life. Have you seen the following words? That I may, what? Rejoice. Crazy in these times? Yes. In the day of Christ. That I have not run in vain neither labored in vain how many want to understand how many want a better understanding of that word just raise that hand above your head just raise that hand a better understanding of this verse anybody yes father here are some hands some people need to get it today Lord, open our minds now, our appetites, uh, hold our attention now. May your spirit bless us. May your spirit console us, counsel us with the word today, Heavenly Father. Make us go from here and, and, and Lord, trust you as we go through dark times. Yes, God, dark times, the times Isaiah saw and the times you lived and purchased our salvation. May the words of our mouths, may the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord God, you are our strength and you are our redeemer. And the church say, Amen. I want us to now begin to do a little surgery on that passage. Holding forth the word of life. By now you understand that we're talking about the fact that when we hold on as Christians or hold forth, we're talking about holding firm and more so holding on to what is firm and holding on to what is going to be able to hold us in a time of uh, nervousness in a time of challenge, in a time of calamity, in a time when everything is breaking loose and the earth is not even solid underneath us. For we are reading that the whole creation groans as it waits for the redemption, that is deliverance from above. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You ever been, uh, just replay the experience of an earthquake and you're on the outside and you're on, at a place where it's not too safe. You want to get to where it is safe. You may be in a building and you figure, well, this roof may collapse. You are looking for some place where it is firm and safe. You want some kind of security. You want to be able to preserve your life, not to get hurt. You look for safety. Well, Paul, as he puts this verse, as he spreads this before us, he wants us to understand that if you want a firm place to hold, it's all in God, in Christ, in the word. For he's talking now about not only the written word, like he's talking about the living word. You see, scripture tells us of a word. And the word, well, let John tell you. John 1.1. 1, 1. Do you remember that verse, St. John? In the beginning was the word. What word? That's Jesus. And the word, Jesus, was with God. 
The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Well, if you go to another passage which upstairs would put on, um, then you'll put back this one before us because we want to kind of dissect. And as we go along, you'll put this one back upstairs before us holding forth the word of life. But I'd love for you to, to showcase John 1.1. 1, 1. St. John 1, 1 from the NIV Bible. Could you get that up on the screen for me? And I want you to look at it because it is talking, brothers and sisters, about what is truly the Word. Look at that. In the beginning was the Word. This is First John. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was it, he was with God in the beginning. Now, now that's what we find also in St. John, don't it? So 1 John and, and 1 John uh, coincides beautifully and, and it brings light on the truth about the incarnate Christ or the manifestation of God in the flesh. That's what incarnation is all about. And you and I have to understand that the whole loop of that. If, if you are going to live understanding, you hold on to uh, what was before and you hold on to what is now and you hold on to what will always be brothers and sisters if you feel unsafe on your job in this world in your home there's one place that you can still feel safe it's a place that always was always is and always will be that is in Jesus Christ the Son of God manifested in the flesh and here before us uh, Paul is saying in these times we must know the word of life because the word of life is for life I want you to get that you know the word of life is for this life and the life to come so, so when we walk around with this, Elder Lincoln, we must know what we have. Oh, yes. And then when we believe it, when we read it, when we take time out to fast and pray and read it, we must embrace it and we must tell ourselves, come hell or high water, mountains fall, earthquake, disease come to our shores. I am still holding forth the word of life. Why? Because God's word remains firm and sure forever. I don't know if you're excited like me in these times. I'm frightened by what is happening around. It is serious when we understand something hits our side of the woods and then it's all over the world the entire world and all of us look like alike mask up and all of us feel the same and all of us are taking the jobs and all of us my brothers and sisters are fearful even if we don't take the job listen all of us have to be thinking this virus you and I I'm telling you will become more fearful as more things happen at the end of time but you and I are are being counseled and encouraged that irrespective of what happens I am going to hold forth the word of life which is for life and forever who in here doesn't want something that is secure? Who in here doesn't want to, want to know that he uh, has something, she has something that will abide forever? Heaven and earth will pass away, but this word abides forever. So what are we understanding as he holds this passage up to us in Philippians 2 and verse 16? Holding forth. The word of life in order, listen to me now, in order, let's get that back on the board upstairs. Let that, let's get that back here. This old school teacher is talking about board on the screen. Let's, let's get that verse back. Holding forth the word of life. Why? Why? He says, 
that I may rejoice. What we preachers learn in college is to help you to remember the sermon. So I'm going to give you three words, three words that you can hold uh, to help you to remember. The word rejoice. The word rejoice is one good word. And we've been hearing messages. I think we had a, had a great message from Stephen Case on this whole thing, joy, not long ago. And you heard a couple I have given as it relates to taking joy in the Lord. And that joy comes in the morning. My brothers and sisters, the second thing you want to find in that verse is the whole thing about a race, right? Running. Running a race. And the Christian life is that kind of a marathon. I was walking with my friend uh, just last week, and uh, we were talking about the marathon race. That the Christian life is not 100 meter race. You don't, it's not one big run from one point of get ready, go and you are finished no brothers and sisters it's a marathon it's a marathon the christian life begins with a choice then it continues on a course and if you run well it ends with glorious consequences but you've got to run well so like you see rejoice in this verse when he says holding forth the word for life, the word of life. He's saying so that you can rejoice, so that you'll dry your tears after you have wept. Follow me closely brothers and sisters. And then he's saying you've got to run. You've got to run. Let's mince it up. So there's a running element in the verse. And there is this rejoicing element in the verse. But if you look carefully in the verse, you will be encouraged to run. You'll be encouraged to have patient continuance. What is it we're seeing? He's saying, when we get to the end of the verse, it would be good to have it before my eyes. But Nathan not paying attention up there at all. I wanted the verse right back on the screen, Philippians 2. 16. The last part of it says, I have not run in vain. Listen to that. Neither, look, neither labored in vain. So there is some element in it about reward. Don't you see it? So you and I will get past all of what's happening and you will be able to rejoice. If you run, and if you run well, and as if that is not enough, there is something in store for all those who will finish the race. For all those who would run well. For all those who would win, run to the winning post. That's what he's talking about. I don't know if you see it, but you know, holding forth the word of life suggests that if you know this word and if you are willing to live by this word, we not only love it, but we must live it and we must learn it and we brothers and sisters must embrace it for life. It will be the answer for our preservation and all of our victories as we serve the Lord. Let's see if I can pull out uh, a little nugget so that it becomes even clearer for you. You've already seen three high points. You've seen the element of rejoicing and that of running and running well. And you have also seen the, the, the element of reward in place for you because it's not in vain. Uh, Paul would say it's not without effect. Same thing it means, not in vain. And so brothers and sisters, Holding for then means to apply. Well, if I may begin even much earlier, because, you know, we have to become quickened by this word and we have to be made um, alive unto Christ. And so that it's about receiving, mark that word, it's another element of faith. 
receiving and believing and obeying all elements of faith we are talking about here. So holding forth means to, 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 to receive, to obey, to apply, to present, or to offer. Whereas the word of life refers to Christ himself. I told you earlier, it's the written word about the living word. All of what is here, when we study Christianity, like, you know, different from all the other religions of the world, what we understand, what defines Christianity for us, is that Christianity is about the words and the works of Jesus Christ. And, and, and that is the big picture. It is so different because who is this Jesus? He's more than an ordinary man. Who is this Jesus? He's bigger than Selassie. Who is this Jesus? Bigger than Muhammad. Who is this Jesus? Bigger than anybody you can ever conceive to be of prominence in the world. Brothers and sisters, and when we hear of his words and his works, then we know, my brothers and sisters, it is extraordinary. That which is from the beginning. Anytime you see that in scripture, it's a mind-blowing thought. That which is from the beginning. So that makes Jesus having no beginning he always was, always is, and always will be in the beginning God. You, you can't get past that. The scientists, the philosophers, the intellectualists, nobody can get around that in the beginning God. So Jesus' final words, yes, his final words that Spence read, 35 onwards to 50, we notice the prominence, follow me, the prominence of Isaiah's prophecy in the quotations in verses 38 and jump to 40 straight back through to 41. So that if you now read John, follow me, if you read St. John now, it's echoing and re-echoing what you found in Isaiah. What is that? Mark it down. Fulfillment of Scripture. It's the truth about the word of God. God's word, when tested, is true. What you have here is true. Don't let any little man on the tree tell you, say, is white man write it. Tell them, yes, God can use white man, black man, pink man, yellow man, you name the man. But those men can be moved of God. And all of that is in the scripture. You must have heard elders teaching this long, long time. Holy men of God spake as they were moved. That is to say, God inspired them to write. And inspiration is talking about the conscious of breathing of God into man. Qualifying them to give utterance of the truth. Which means this thing will be fulfilled. The Bible will. My brothers and sisters, it is time for back to the Bible. Back to the Bible. Broadcast it near and far. It is back to the Bible. Everything in this book is coming to reality. Why? It's God's word. We've closed it. It's compiled dust. Oh, we've put it down. It stayed crisp. 
we pick it up on Sundays and we come to church and listen for another exposition from it and, and, and we have not gone into it ourselves on our own and we have not read the 66 books we, we cannot segment it we cannot put it in context oh shame on us when those who are cults embrace what they call their guidance, their book, so much. They know it from cover to cover. And some of us don't even have our names in our Bible. And can I tell you, every church I've been to, and I've been serving in several churches. I know 19 Gale Grove Baptist. I know Darlistan Baptist. I know Hewitt's View Baptist. I know Waterford Missionary. I know Portmore Missionary Church. Guess what? Every church I go to, people left them Bible at church. Come, let me show you in the vestry. Some Bible will get left. Come, let me show you in the holders at the back there. Ushers take the Bibles up. Guess what? They come to church and looking for it like most looking breadcrumbs. They never read it for the whole week. Isn't that sad? When this is the word of life for life. Where this is the written word about the living word. Where this is what the, the, the prophet Isaiah tells us, we can't do without it. Let me take you there. Let me take you there. I'm, I'm taking too long to get you to where Isaiah speaks. And upstairs is going to give me some more uh, passages on the screen. Because if you look at Isaiah, as he made this prophecy, this was not a man who was wild out there like, you know, a bushman. And, and, and he was making up a lot of noise and people were laughing at him and no doubt calling him religious fanatic. Criticizing him and you name it, rejecting him and, and he became a mocker and, and you name it. But brothers and sisters, he was a mouthpiece for God. A mouthpiece for God. And in Isaiah 53 and verse 1, and, and in Isaiah 6 and verse 10, and a matter of fact, I, I'm not just encouraging you to read these passages, these two passages from Isaiah. I'm encouraging you to read all the chapters of Isaiah. Oh, God, Pastor McCann. 60 odd chapters? Yeah. Don't fray that these long chapters. A chapter every day may keep the doctor or the devil away. And you're finding the same thing in Isaiah, what you hear John with and Jesus and Paul in the New Testament. And if you don't believe it, check it out for yourself. Isaiah and John are on the same page. And now Jesus and Paul. For Paul is saying exactly what Jesus came to declare. Hold forth the word of life in order that you may rejoice and you must run well and you will be rewarded. My brothers and sisters, Dr. Luke, in 11th chapter of, of his book, and verse 28, he said, Blessed are all who hear the word of God. And put it in practice or, or obey it. Look at Isaiah 53 and verse 1. It's up there on the screen for you if you can't get to it in your Bible. It's a prophet asking, who has believed our message? Oh, this message has been echoed all over. Who believes it? Do you feel lonely today when you go into the workplaces and find out there are a number of persons who know Jesus personally as Lord and Savior? Aren't you lonely in the marketplace at times? Who has believed our message? As I say, the people who believe, you can know them. They've been transformed. They are changed. The people who don't are wayward. They're thieves and robbers. Oh, they're backbiters. You name it. 
And he asked, to whom has the hand of the Lord been revealed? And then if you continue to reflect on what Spence read, there was a people described in the whole passage. Them hard ears. Them are eye, but them blind. They have ears, but they don't know what they have it for. They have eyes, but they're looking in the wrong places and looking at the wrong persons. Read it for yourself again. You heard it earlier. It was the description of a people who were wayward. The description of a people who never knew what it means to hold on to God in tough times. Their eyes were on politicians. Their eyes were on world leaders. Brothers and sisters, this is the time when last you listen to line. When you last you listen to some talk shows, you find how some people are disappointed. All you're hearing is cause, cause, criticism. All you're hearing is mounting going on. There are some people whose eyes are just on PNP or JLP or on some other P. Where are those who believe the message? Where are those? To whom the arm of the Lord has been revealed. The story is, my brothers and sisters, there are some people who are in some dilemmas. They are blind and they are dumb and they are deaf. My brothers and sisters, they are dull, Isaiah is saying. They are stupid and they are insensible. And that they need the healing of the Lord. That's what we find in the passage when he cried out in chapter 6 and verse 10. Which, which is a passage you could um, put on the screen now. Make the heart of this people fat. And this fatness is not the good fat. This is bad fat. Hello. Sometimes we have bad fat and we don't know. If you, if you don't just listen to somebody who, who tells you, oh, you look good because you're fat. Sometimes that fat needs to be trimmed off so that you live longer, so you get rid of some disease. Please don't watch my belly up here. I'm working hard with, with um, Elder Core. You notice both of us are getting shorter since the pandemic. And so we are talking about how we, how we, how we work it off, man. How, uh, and, and you get on some friends sometimes to walk with you and them fail you. And leave you alone. And you have to know how to run on your own. And how to do it on your own, brothers and sisters. Why? Because you want to remain healthy. Well, as I was kind of describing some, some of these people who, who were fat, they, it means they were heavy and dull and stupid. And, and he said they make their ears heavy and, and they shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Oh, he describes here the malady of sin. The malady of sin. How sad to know that our world can be in darkness and people are so dumb and ignorant. And here is a record that God has left on the earth. It's called the manual of life, the manual for life. It's the word of God. It's the word of God that is quick and powerful. It is the word of God that is sharper than to any two-edged sword. It's the word of God that is going to show the way. He's making it clear. Now to show you that Isaiah and John were corresponding, I, I want you to note that he adds Jesus to the list right now because his prophecy did not just remain prophecy. Yeah, his prophecy was fulfilled. Isaiah's prophecy was fulfilled. Look at Acts chapter 28 
Acts 28, 26 and 27. Let's get that verse on. I'm going to have you turn to so many passages today. Why? Because you need to prove today that this word of God is being fulfilled before our very eyes. That the Old Testament is the new revealed. That the Old Testament is the old the new concealed and that you and I can find light in God's word and life in God's word. It is the light for the world. What is it that we hear the same doctor man writing about? Right? You know by now that Acts was written as well by a doctor, right? Chapter 28, if you're there, say amen. If you're not there, just look on the screen. It's, it's right there, thanks to upstairs. And you're seeing, my brothers and sisters, in these two verses, what you would have found in Isaiah as well. Yes? And what you would have found in John as well. For you hear the truth about God's word echoing and re-echoing for us. I'll just back up and read from verse 25. And when they had agreed not among themselves, they departed after that. Paul had spoken one word. Well, the Holy Ghost, by Isaiah the prophet, unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people, and say unto this people, Hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand. In other words, you're hearing out only because you have ears, two big ears. But there's no understanding, no acceptance. And seeing, he shall see and not perceive. You get the gist? For the heart of this people is what? Wax gross, cold. And their ears are stopped, are dull, dull of hearing. The truth. We were doing psychology. There was this big subject on communication. And they talk about surface listening. Huh? And they talk about sensitive listening. You know what they're talking about here? And the surface listening is listening... But you're hearing what you want to hear. But the sensitive listening is different. For the law of good communication is about the sender and the receiver. Oh, yeah. you, 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 you get the gist? And there are times when you're just going to have to ensure that you stop. You look and you listen. To get you out of danger. Real stop, look and listening. And their eyes have they closed. Still in verse 27. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. And understand with their heart and should be converted. And I should heal them. Now it sounds like we are still reading in Isaiah. Hello. The Bible is one united book. It's a beautiful book. When you get into studying this, you find that it is one book miraculously preserved as a manual for life. That it is not just written word like it is living word. How many times should I repeat this before your ears? It is true, brothers and sisters, if you take it seriously. It's a book of books. It's the book of books. 
And you and I are going to have to understand that it's being fulfilled before our very eyes. So let me tell you what I found in Isaiah. Long book, but very interesting. Can I challenge you to go reading? And to be consistent with your reading, sometimes don't stop reading until you get to the last chapter. And if you get some help in understanding it by way of commentaries and so on. And a matter of fact, if you become a good Bible reader, I'm telling you the truth and ask God to help you, you become a commentary yourself. You don't have to look for a book to help you. Because the Spirit reveals, don't it, Elder Basin? The Spirit teaches. Living experiences, life experiences. When, when Camille come around here to, to lead praise and worship, it's not just some choruses he rehearsed with his team. No. And he says some things that blend and preaches. I put it to you, it's true. That's how his wife always talked to him, right? You remember he tells us? I put it to you. It is, it is really what comes from within the heart as God prepares you. You, you see these guys, a lot of people, even one last week under a tree when I went to walk, that Anne-Marie connect me with, begin to say, oh, you're referring to the Bible. White man read it. White man write it for them to read it. Duh. We never stop to think why Jesus came as a man. It was a man preaching. And they were booing him. They were stoning him. They eventually crucified him. But he was from heaven. He was a manifestation of God. And he declared, I'm in him, he's in me, I'm he. There are these little mysteries that will be in our histories. And you are going to have to understand and accept the truth of the word. It is the word of God that is alive. And Isaiah prophesied. Can I tell you? In verses 40, in chapters I should say. Chapters 40 through, through 60. I challenge you. Now, this may not come in the chronological order, but you are going to find it. If you take your notebook and take your notes, I did that, and I found out, brothers and sisters, that if you begin to read from chapter 40 into chapter 61 at least, what are you are going to come up with? Let me tell you, some high subjects. Here are they. The shepherd of life. Check Isaiah. He can tell you about the shepherd and the sheep. You'll find it. If you don't come back, challenge me. I'll stay with you the whole rest of the day. After church. The shepherd and the sheep. The guy prophesied a long time before good shepherd, great shepherd, and chief shepherd came to earth. He's talking about us being sheep gone astray, turned everyone to our own way. I challenge you, brothers and sisters. His prophecy was about shepherd and sheep. His prophecy was about water for the thirsty. Have you read Isaiah? Water for the thirsty. His prophecy was about food for the hungry and guidance for those who are lost. Isaiah's prophecy was about the divine comforter who we now have as the Holy Spirit. He prophesied, he, he spoke about world salvation. He said this is one thing that is going to be worldwide. Like we had coronavirus worldwide. Meaning people will be delivered, will be saved, will experience salvation worldwide. That's something common among us. Isaiah's prophecy was about freedom from fear. Isaiah's prophecy was about sight for the blind. Isaiah's prophecy was about liberty for the bound, divine healing, and divine teaching. We saw it. Jesus was here, healing and teaching. 
Read on into the 50s and into 61 and you find, my brothers and sisters, all of these high subject matters. What can I now carry you from Isaiah to John? Can I? Can I take you from the Isaiah record to the gospel according to St. John? What is it that you find in John? I hope you would have read through St. John 1, 2, and 3 John. Because if you just read one of the Johns, you're not going to get it. You're not going to be able to fit the man and his style of writing. And you won't be able to know to say, a John said that. When and where did John say that? Very important. Many years had passed. John came on the scene. He was not a copycat. I challenge you. But he came with the word from the same place, from the halls of heaven. And John began to talk about shepherd and sheep, water for the thirsty, food for the hungry, guidance for the strayed, divine comfort for the, for the uncomfortable, the, the gift of the spirit, the world wide salvation, freedom from fear, sight for the blind, liberty for the bound, divine healing and divine teaching. John was all over the place. And you know what is beautiful? Is that John was not just telling you it is to come. John is saying, he's here. Behold the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sin of the world. I'm by his side. He's by my side. He's true to me. I want to be true to him. My brothers and sisters, it was prophecy revealed. Oh, yeah. This is the truth about the gospel. And now you ask Paul, and Paul is telling you straight up, I'm with Isaiah. I'm with John. I'm with Jesus. A matter of fact, Paul said, for me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. Yeah, Paul was just so sold out. I count all things but dung for the excellency. His faith in Christ Jesus was now his number one. As brilliant as he was. Can I talk to some brilliant people at PMC? Can I talk to some teachers and some professors? Can I talk to some cops here and some nurses and doctors? Can I talk to some people who are well learned, well read? Can I tell you? That you need to become like Paul, just totally immersed into Jesus Christ, where you come to understand I count all things but loss for the sake of Jesus. For I lost it all to find everything. I'll die a pauper. To be born a king. When I learn how to lose, I'll find out how to win. For I've lost it all to find everything. That everything is the all sufficient Jesus. The all sufficient one. So Paul says, I'm among them. This is the message. Don't get it now, get it. I'm summarizing. Paul is saying, I'm going to kill me or spare me. I'm going to hold on. And I'm going to prove to the world that what I'm holding on to is the firmest, is the best. I'm holding on to the word of life, for this is word for life. And I'm holding on in order to, help me, first R, rejoice. 
rejoice. You see, before you even run better when you get saved. <laughs> you want to rejoice first. And then Brother Lincoln's point. I'm holding on because I want to finish well. I want to run well. Yeah, I want to run well. And he said, if I only learn to rejoice in my suffering and my tribulation, and if I run well to the winning post, it is guaranteed I'll be rewarded. I will be rewarded. For God is not slack concerning his promise. He's a faithful God. He's a faithful God. I wonder if there's anybody who would want to say it like Paul said it. That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his suffering. Being made conformable to. And he now speaks of becoming like Christ so that he can showcase Christ that I may know him so that I may show him yes. hallelujah Bless the Lord. What a word it was, my friends, as we prayed earlier that the Lord would leave a word to us, and indeed, He did. And I do trust that all of us who listened, unfortunately, we're not live this morning, but I do hope that we can be able to um, put forward this message online at some point so that more persons can hear the word. As Pastor reminded us, he took us through so many scriptures and shows how they all interlink. And it's all about the importance of who God is and what we need to do. It talks about Paul, it talks about Isaiah, it talks about John. And we're going to come back to that, but we're going to sing this song, 270 words, wonderful words of life as we just think about the word of God and let it kind of soak inside of us then we close off later on sing them over again to me wonderful words of life Hallelujah. let me more of their beauty see wonderful words of life sing them over again to me Wonderful words of life, let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life, words of life and beauty, teach me faith and beauty, beautiful words. Before we go to the final stanza, 
and I tried to take good notes. And there were some solid things mentioned. Pastor talked about Isaiah and how he and John, well, he prophesied. And John actually announced, meaning that this is here, what Isaiah prophesied about, some of the things he prophesied about. The shepherd and the sheep talks about water for the thirsty. Many of us are thirsty at times, and we need to be refreshed. Food for the hungry, guidance for the lost, freedom from fear. Many of us are fearful now, fearful of COVID and all manner of things, free to go outside, fearful to go among people. Sight for the blind, healing and teaching among others. But the part I love was where, 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 where Paul came in. And the scripture is read in Philippians 2.16. Holding forth the word of life. That I may rejoice in the day of Christ. That I may not run in vain. Neither labor in vain. And pastor summarize it. This journey. We rejoice. Isn't that so? So amidst everything that's happening around us, business shutting down and can't go to work and you know, all manner of things happening, we rejoice. And then after we rejoice, we run. And, and there's one part about the race that Pastor talk about that I love that really resonates with me. Because it was last night I was watching um, some flashback of Olympics, the recent Olympics. I know the thing about the, 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 the secular race is that only those who comes among the top three are remembered. Correct? Yeah. Number one get gold. Number two get silver. Number three get um, bronze. And everybody has forgot. As a matter of fact, it's the same thing we do in Jamaica. When those get the gold come and the bronze and so on, we go and meet them at the airport. But all, everybody has to come in and they own private, they own car and reach home. But this race is not about number one, you know. Pastor said it's about finishing. So even if you drop while going around the truck and you get up once you cross the finish line it is good enough for God isn't that so? Amen. so some of us we're going to be we're going to sin yes Hallelujah. we're going to do wrong yes because the human thing is still in us we're going to mess up but if we stand forth and run the race and cross the finish line it is good enough for God amen, amen. come on church say amen amen, amen. Bless the Lord. And the last part of it, there is a reward. Sometimes you wonder why you're running, not true? Why are you running all of this? Does it make sense? But guess what? We keep on running because there is a reward. So I encourage us, Simon, and if you are so convinced to stand as we sing the last stanza, and if there's a commitment you need to make with God this morning, make it. If you're not a Christian, I have not known Christ as a person as Savior. You can make that commitment this morning because guess what? You cannot depend on this world for all these things. All that we're talking about. Unless you have God behind you. You know, I, I went to this conference, um, 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 was it Friday? Listen to the great John Maxwell. I know one good thing I, I love about him. After speaking about all those niceties and so on. He said that none of this is important unless God is in it. I was surprised because I knew that this man is a man of faith, you know. The man said, unless you have God, yes. whatever I'm talking about don't make any sense. So you, my friend, unless God is in your vessel, all that you have at the front as your facade don't make any sense. Let's stand together as we sing the last stanza before we close off. Sweetly echo the gospel's call, wonderful words of life, of the pardon and peace to all, wonderful words of life, Jesus only Savior, sanctify us
Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you, God, for bringing us here this morning. And Lord, recognize there are many persons who were not able to listen to your word this morning. But I pray that God, somehow, they will hear it when the replay is done. Because a wonderful word that reminds us and encourages us as Christians. And not only that, but also appeal to those who are not. God, I pray that today, all of us, everyone of us here, we make that commitment. Lord, I want to finish that race. Help me. You know my weakness. You know my challenges. You know my issues. You know where my mind is at this point in time. Help me to finish that race. So that God, that reward, I can take advantage of it. Lord, teach us how to read your word as Pastor mentioned. Or to imbibe on your word, God. Or to spend hours upon hours, just like what we do on our phone, in your word so that you can reveal your word to us. That we can stand firm in this word. Lord, bless us, we pray. We thank you for your man's servant this morning. He did mention, Lord, it's challenging. I know, yes, for all of us, it's been so challenging. Every day is a different day, God. You don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. You wake up, you may hear about some relative who was rushed off to the hospital. Another funeral service that we have to participate in, etc., etc. And it's tough. But God, we are looking to you because you have a purpose in everything. And so God, we look into you, Lord, to take us through all of this. Help us, we pray, that we shall not lose faith, O oh God. But we shall have that rejoice. That spirit of rejoice shall be upon us. And that we shall run this race, God. And we shall finish it so that the reward will be revealed to us. Lord, bless Pastor, I pray. Strengthen him in every way you can, Lord. Help him, my God, as he spends his own time going through the world to hear something to take to the sheep. May you continue to reveal that fresh word to him, Lord. And for all of us leaders and members, help us to help the process that we also may spend time in the word of God. We thank you for what you did today, for everybody who participated, for those who came for the musicians, from the praise and worship team, for those who led, for those who behind the scene with the instruments. Lord, we thank you and we bless your holy name. Take charge for the rest of the service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>